Everybody, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy NFL Picks. I'm your host, Mary Rover 31. Uh, sorry about last week. I just went to an outdoor wedding and then I developed a cough. I really wasn't sick. I felt perfectly fine. Just weird. I don't know if it was like sinuses or allergies or what was going on, but I tried to talk for a couple minutes and started coughing. But uh, content was solid with the video that I could get out to you and it worked out um, pretty well for me. I put about fifty dollars, went over two hundred, so we'll all take that. So week five, we have uh, two teams on by the Eagles and the Lions. We have a London game, so I believe that gives us about a ten game slate here to go over. So starting with the first game, Carolina and Chicago, forty one total uh, should be a close game, about four point spread favoring Chicago at home. Carolina side of things, Andy Dalton is um, in play. Trevor Hubbard is definitely someone to look at in the mid-range. It's his backfield. He's been pretty solid. The The Bears have had a defense that you can definitely uh, run against, but uh, also punish against. So they've gotten better, and there's some potential there. But I, I think either side of the ball, they should be okay. Taking advantage of, so uh, Deontay Johnson, Legat is um, you know, playing Dalton's where uh, pair of wide receivers, and uh, he really not pushing anything else on this. Chicago side, Caleb Williams is starting to show that he can read an NFL defense and um and make plays. I think it's gonna take a while before. I don't think he's gonna be Bryce Young, but he's definitely not um. Daniels either, who has come out on the scene and just um, been standing for Washington, showing that he's definitely ready. So, so Williams and GPPs I uh, can see playing. DeAndre Swift came out last week and said, "Hey guys, remember me?" After everybody went on the waiver wire and took Rashad Johnson because they thought he was going to be the starter, Swift came out and started running and catching balls out of the backfield and was super involved. But I like Swift. I don't love him. I think there's some other plays in cheap range, but he did make the board as an option there because you still have Johnson there. You still have Herbert there, and you have a quarterback that's um, still trying to figure things out. Wide receiver-wise, uh, DJ Moore is um, definitely the top option here. Keenan Allen is still there if you can stay healthy. But Duse had a good week when Allen was out, but it doesn't seem like he's been as much of a priority, but uh, he's still lurking there. And then come at the tight end. Uh, I, like, I think there's better place a tight end, especially with um, a lot of these teams that are depleted with wide receivers. So I don't know if I'm going there, but he's I'm not going to cross him off the board. Next game, Bills and Houston, my second favorite stack of the week. Starting with the Buffalo set of 47 total, one point spread. So it should be a close game and an exciting one. Uh, Allen, you can always play him naked without anybody else. Uh, Cook has been pretty strong option also in the 7K range. I think I would um, prefer like Mason or Kyrie or Williams or Henry over him if I am playing but if you are trying to build a Buffalo stack then I'm okay going there wide receiver they're out Shakir so does that mean Cook's going to get more production possibly <laughs> does that mean he's going to catch more balls out of the backfield possibly we don't know like with this wide receiver group like who the ball's going to Coleman's the exciting young guy that um got benched but then came out and was productive but he's kind of boomer bust Collins is, uh, had been solid, and he's only 3-1. But, and then you have the veteran Samuels and like Valdez Scanling hanging around also. So no idea where things are really going to go there with wide receivers, but I think Kincaid is very solid. Dox, Dawson Knox is a little bit banged up, might not play. And if he doesn't, then that just makes Kincaid just such a uh, uh, more solid play for the tight end position so if you're paying up for tight end then he is definitely well worth it and i my favorite um guy to pair with alan on the other side cj stroud is still uh, he's not um having like the little way here like he started off last year but i think he still has a lot of uh potential 
uh, for the running game. Uh, Mixon is out again. It looked like he was going to be back. I think everybody dropped Cam Akers out of their season-long league. I'm in three of them, and I think everybody that I team that had him dropped him. But he's going to be back. Uh, he hasn't done a ton so I think there's much better options that are cheaper out there for filling running backs. And uh, Bill's uh, defense has been decent against um, against the, the run. So I think that's that – I don't know if I really want to play him on. Uh, I'd stick for, with the other value ones. Wide receivers, Nico Collins is, is an elite wide receiver. Probably my favorite one if you're if you're paying up there, if you're playing Stroud to pay or with there. Stefan Diggs is like the prima donna. Like he's there and he's going to um and just uh, garner attention. Like they have to come up with plays for him. They have to try to get him involved or he's just gonna whine. So I just don't know why Houston picked him up. Buffalo is doing so well without him just because Allen is just working with the wide receivers and throwing to the one that's open. But it just seems like when he was on the Bills, you were forcing plays to him just because he needed to eat and would complain if he didn't and it just made for a bad situation. So Hopefully this doesn't ruin this young Houston team because Tank Dell is there and a solid play. And um, and I know he came back for injury and had a little bit of setback and, uh, and got banged up again, but he should be back and, and ready to go. So you have three really good threats at wide receiver here. I just hope that it's a case where Stroud can play for whoever is open. And uh, then you have Dalton Schultz also still lurking there as a good tight end option that's uh, I don't know if I'd play him as much now with um in the 4k range I think there's better options and I think also with all these weapons out there that uh, he might take a back seat to some of them and not have the targets and production that you really need to have a strong game out of him for DFS purposes not for um, you know he could have a solid game for like in real life football the Browns and the Commanders, 43.5 total here, about a three-point spread favoring Washington, which I don't know. I, I really think I like Cleveland in this one. I know everybody was down after the first couple weeks on Deshaun Watson. He's a terrible quarterback, but I think he was like the number one quarterback to pick up for um, on waiver wires in season long this week. So Starting on the Cleveland side, like I don't know where this is going to go. Washington's defense has been bad against the run and the pass. So I think there's definitely some opportunity for him to go out there and score points. And I don't, I know Jaden Daniels has been, and I don't know, and Washington's been putting up points, but I don't understand the three points. So if I'm betting, I know McKinley puts his props up there, but if I had a pop, I would be taking Cleveland, but with the plus three, if you can get it over the commanders. I really think that they're going to win this game. So Watson, I will be playing him. He's not my favorite, but I am intrigued enough to put him in a lineup for it. I think it was a strong play at running back also, especially if you want to pair with the Cleveland defense. I think the Cleveland defense is legit here. No, I don't have him up on the board. And this is this is a GVP that I'm, I'm building. It's not like anything I'm looking for in cash, but I think Watson for the Cleveland defense and then uh, a wide receiver here. So I, I like Judy the most. Uh, Cooper's been the most consistent. Elijah Moore's kind of fallen back with uh, Judy coming back and being healthy. And Njoku, the tight end, should be back in play also. So if he's in, then I think he's also a, a decent option. Can probably get you 7 to 10 points. And I think people will, might forget that he's around or they'll be looking at all these other options that are – round two so i think that they'll um not want to see how he performs after being injured so we'll have to see how that works out commander side Jaden daniels uh will definitely be super popular especially in the medium range but again i'm just against this cleveland defense i want to see brian robinson should be playing but he's banged up so don't know how that's going to go. And, and then Eckler's back on. Uh, he's out of concussion protocol and should be playing. So I don't know if I'm touching either one of them. I like them. And 
But again, I just don't know how this is going to play out. Wide receivers, um, Noah Brown, who I really liked last week, got injured. Just uh, watching the previous game on Monday Night Football, like he got targeted a lot and just missed some big plays. I think it's just a matter before they connect. So McLaurin is super solid there. If you want to pair him with Daniels, that makes a lot of sense. Luke McCaffrey could be a very um, sneaky sleeper play. This guy is very talented. It's just he's going to have a slate breaking um, game sometime this season. I, I can just feel it. And then Zacchaeus, who came over from the Falcons, I like, was always been the Zacchaeus Westberg. I don't think this is the game for him, but he's always there lurking. And if um, something were to happen to like one of the other wide receivers, he could definitely be in play, but I don't think um, he's one that I want to play this week. And then Ertz, a tight end is also always a, a solid um, pairing with uh, Daniels. If you wanted to go that way, Miami in new England, everybody's going to cross off this game. So if you want to throw something weird in the millionaire, uh, contest then this might be where you want to go because there's going to be such low ownership so Huntley should be the quarterback for um for the team we'll have to see I don't think the other guy is um Tua is going to come back this week from what I've seen Moster is back so I really can't do the running game and they just they've been misusing the running game too because they I'm trying to run a county up the middle, but he's more of a catch out of the backfield and a, uh, a east and west runner than a north and south guy. And it just, it wasn't working. So they couldn't establish the run and there was no timing with Huntley and he was under throwing Hill. He was overthrowing Hill. He just looked bad. Odell Beckham Jr. could potentially be uh, back in the mix, ready to play this week also so keep in mind he might be active so and the new england has definitely been a pass funnel defense so you can they've been decent against the run but really bad against the pass. so i think hill is only going to have like maybe one or two percent ownership so this could be a smash spot in the millionaire to pair like huntley and hill and if he goes off then uh, it could like completely break the slate there not saying that's going to happen, but people are gonna look at the low total and like the mess Miami's been and just kind of cast them off. I'm not paying up that much, but he's down to like seven six. There are times where he's up like in the nine K range. He's still the cheetah. He's not I don't think he's injured or anything. So if they had a, I know it's a short week, they played on Monday, but if these had any chance to practice to work on timing and stuff and get on the same page, it could be something that could um be very beneficial. So I will take some shots on Hill and um, a GPP. Like I said, the backfield, I don't really want to touch here. Waddle and Beckham, eventually, and Johnny Smith, not super interested in, in the tight end play. New England, not, nothing here. Gibson might start over Stevenson. So you got a huge mud puddle there in the backfield. Hulk, maybe if you need a cheap wide receiver, could probably get you again the seven to ten range for for points. Uh, but Warren's banged up. Douglas was supposed to be the number one, who's just done absolutely nothing. Osborne is floating around there too. I think Hunter Henry, that's tight end, is probably the most solid one. So if you were doing like a game stack situation here, went like Huntley Hill, and um, then took like Hunter Henry. And then maybe if you want to get really cute, then take uh, Moster, who should be back and be like the hammer back and you know, the Dolphins defense if you think that they get way up and then they're just running the ball to uh, run out the clock. Ravens and Bengals, favorite game of the week, 48 total, a one point, or actually it's a 2.5 point spread. It's moving a little bit more towards Baltimore, but this is a division game. This is always a close game and always a good game. Lamar Jackson had looked super solid on Sunday Night Football against a, a good Bills team. Derrick Henry had an, almost had a 200-yard game. Uh, it was just so funny because if the game was not in question. We kept on giving him the ball just to try to get him the 200-yard game, and Buffalo's defense was like, nope, not going to happen, like waving the Dikembe Mutombo uh, finger at him and just absolutely stopping them. 
trying to get him that just like one or two yards he needed, but just an amazing game for King Henry. I just, uh, I was skeptical. Like I'm a Ravens fan. Uh, when they, he picked him up after like seeing him in Houston and it was like in, in Tennessee and just like thought he was like at the end of his career. But I think it was just, they were mismanaging him on offense. Now they have said that like he always does well at the beginning of the season. And if you get too much mileage on him, then he like kind of wears out and then towards the end, he's not effective. But I think that there's enough um, plays players on this team that that's not going to happen and they're almost like watching navy play football it's almost like the the wishbone triple option here that they're running with like henry hill and mccard in the in the backfield they're really not passing so i don't really like the wide receivers like if you always want to take a shot with like say flowers and a gvp but it's they're not going that way and the tight ends are out there for like blocking like likely i think is like probably the best option but unless one of these guys is hurt or, or they're missing like another piece of the offense i don't think you can really go with the ravens passing game so i think you go lamar and henry here and then on the Bengals side you run it back with higgins over chase bro i think is in play although the baltimore um, has turned into a cross funnel defense. So Moss, I'm not touching. Chase Brown, I'm not touching. So Burrow is in play, but I really like Higgins here. Um, Iosovich is still lingering there, and every so often he'll have a remember me uh, long catch or a touchdown catch. But I think Chase and Higgins are the big ones, and I think that most people game plan against Chase. So it gives Higgins more options to be open, and he runs really good routes and is able to get open and catches the ball pretty good. Uh, tight end, Eric All, I think, is unseated Gesicki. So there again, with such with both of them in play here, there's really not one dominant one, so I'm not going to fill a tight end spot with either one of these, even if I'm stacking the game. If I was stacking, then go chase Ann Higgins with Woodboro if you feel you need more, but I think you can just go single stack and um and like run it back with Henry on the other side if you want to go more bangles. Colts and Jaguars could be some weather in this game, about a 70% chance of rain tapering off down to the 40s by the time like they get through kickoff. 45.5 total, fourth favorite game on the slate here, uh, about a three-point spread figure favoring Jacksonville. Uh, Indianapolis Flacco uh, is out there. He's, he's more of a game manager. He still can throw the ball. He can still be productive i think he's turning into like a fitzpatrick or like one of these journeyman quarterbacks that just um, like doug flutie like Minshew was kind of like that like not a novelty act but one that can go out there and and just pop up in a situation where he needs to be called upon to be a solid backup and 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 go out there and um lead an offense lose they lose Taylor this week. He is out so sermon will be in the backfield i know that he was like pretty big on waiver pickups uh, I, I don't know against this Jacksonville defense if I really want to go there. I think I'd really want to go more for the passing game. So I think Sermon's in play, but he's not one of my favorite ones in in your cash lineup. I know like some sites I see have people gravitating you there, but I think Tracy Jr. Uh, for the Giants filling in for uh, Singletary is where I like to go um, more than that. But I'm not saying don't play Sermon. I'm just saying that I just I see, I think, a little bit more upside with uh, Tracy over him just based on. But if it is going to be pouring rain and they aren't going to be passing the ball, then that, that definitely leads to a good game script for, for Sermon here. And Pittman, I think, is very strong wide receiver. I think he's going to have like maybe 30% ownership uh, in, in cash. Like Solid play here. Downs also. Uh, Pierce lurking. So if you're playing Flacco, I'd put Pittman and Downs as uh, the wide receivers. I would pair with them. I find the double stack and tight ends not touching that. Jacksonville side, Trevor Lawrence. So what's happening with Trevor Lawrence? I think he's shaking off injury to start the season. And then it's just the offense is, is terrible. They've been trying to establish a run, but and be like a run first and, and then pass. But I think they need to pass to open up the run. I think they got the game script backwards. But the Colts are the number one defense that you can always run against. So I think that's um, one that you could, 
Etienne and Bigsby should be really good. Target Big, Bigsby should be um, healthy here. So Etienne, I know like he's he's still out snapping Bigsby. Bigsby is not going to get as many touches, but his he's the more explosive player. So I'm perfectly fine going with either one of these plays. I lean ETN because I still think that he's the guy and they really want to get him established. I think Big Speed's the change of pace. And even though he could have like one or two more explosive plays, I would rather go with the volume. Wide receiver wise, Brian Thomas Jr. has really emerged as a top one over Kirk here. Uh, super solid. I know they brought Gabe Davis in here also. So. Uh, you can pair any of them with Lawrence, but my favorite one is Thomas. So if I'm stacking this game, give me Lawrence and Thomas. If you want to go uh, Flacco over Lawrence, and I'm fine with that. Also, the $200 difference here. But I think you're probably going to get closer to 20 points with Lawrence and closer to 15 points with Flacco. And uh, Strange at tight end is another one, too. So if you wanted to throw him into the the mix as a cheap stack under um 3k is only 3.2 then that works also cardinals and the 49ers what a disappointment the cardinals have been like you look at the total of this one and it's 48.5 and you think i'd have it further up on my rankings of games to to play but it's number five which is almost in the middle because we only have 10 games here it's just because I don't think it's going to be close. I think the 49ers are going to go out there and just destroy them. The Cardinals have no defense. Murray has not had the upside. I have him even on the fade list. I think he's going to struggle against good defense. He just really hasn't looked like, I don't know if it's trepidation because of the knee injury that he's um, not running as much or they're game planning him to try to protect him so it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Or, like, Connors is just a solid running back, so he doesn't have to scramble. Harrison is definitely starting to uh, break out and emerge as who we thought he would be. But at 7-5, that's just way too expensive for upside and and not um, a known commodity. Plus, they should be getting McBride back in this one, and he should eat away at uh, Harrison's target share. So, on the Cardinals side, you can play Murray. But I think it's more GPP. I prefer... I'm putting McBride with him. You can put Connor with him also, but love the San Francisco side. Brock Purdy was the game manager. He was the Trent Dilfer. He was out there to uh, just uh, lead the offense, not make mistakes, and just let the weapons take over and do their thing, especially when they have McCaffrey. They don't have him this year. His average throw depth is up there. He has just been doing so much more and so much more efficient and really has become, I'm not saying he's becoming Tom Brady or like uh, an elite superstar. Um, I still like the, like Allen's and Lamar that have like more of a little more uh, rushing upside. Purdy will scramble if needed, but he has been solid. So I think that you definitely need to consider him in the medium range. Mason is probably the lock in cash. He has just been so consistent Arizona cannot stop him. I think they're going to get up, and then there's, he's going to be getting the ball to run out the clock. So it's a great, great game script for Mason. Wide receiver-wise, Ayuk, I'm not touching. He is just rusty. He The contract thing is just not working. Samuel is solid. Jennings has been solid also. And, and Jennings at uh, like 5'6 could get you 10 points. Like He runs good routes and is a – the wide receiver three, but is a part of this offense. Kittle should make his return. If he doesn't, that makes me like Jennings and Samuel even more. So if Kittle is in play, yeah, you can play him. I, I don't know if I'd like go like a triple stack here, but I think you want as many pieces of the San Francisco offense as you can. And if you're running it back, go with Harrison. But if um, McBride's in, then I think I'll go with Harrison over McBride. Raiders and Broncos, another game that we're probably not touching. It has a 35.5 total. So another one, if you want to mix in New York Millionaire, has the same exact total as New England and Miami. So you have a two and a half point favorite in Denver. 
So Raiders, not really touching Gardner Minshew. Denver has a pretty solid defense. Madison in the backfield, I'm not interested in either, even though Samir White is out. It's like Madison has been starting to uh, come alive there. And then the wide receivers, uh, Adams is out, so it's going to be Myers and, and Tucker. Again, they're both cheap and possibly probably get you about 10 DK points, but I really like the tight end Bowers if I'm going anywhere. So I, I probably, if I'm if I'm trying to do anything cute with this game, is I take the Denver side, I take Bo Nix, I take Sutton, and then I run it back with Bowers if I was to stack this game and like the millionaire just trying to get low, low ownership on um on quarterback and stuff. And, and maybe throw Hill in that one if you don't trust like the quarterback, because I think Nix is a very solid um. You know, he's somewhere between uh, Daniels and um, Hale Williams as a, as, as a young quarterback in, in the spectrum. The running back, is, it's hard to figure out because McLaughlin should be catching balls out of the backfield, but Javante Williams seems to be getting all the carries, and neither one of them has been super productive, so I'm not really touching them there. So, again, Knicks, Sutton. Run it back with Bowers. Maybe throw Tyreek Hill in that lineup also. And uh, there's maybe a really nice core for your millionaire. Giants and Seahawks, uh, 42.5 total here. Seahawks are favored by seven. Daniel Jones uh, losing more weapons. His uh, neighbors, his number one wide receiver, is in concussion protocol, I believe. So he's out. Uh, he loses Singletary, who's been really good in the backfield. So... It's going to be the Tyrone Tracy show, who I'm finally playing in cash. Probably going to have 25, 50% ownership uh, between he and Sermon. If you want a really cheap build and to focus on like upside wide receivers, then you can play Sermon and Tracy. I still prefer like going with like Mason or Kyrie Williams or Henry to get like one of those super upside running backs. But if you want to go the cheap running back route, and then try to nail it with wide receivers and pay up for a tight end and, and defense and quarterback, then um, that can work for you. Wide receivers, Wendell Robinson and Slayton are probably the ones that are going to benefit the most here. Wendell uh, runs good routes. He, he can get deep also. And Slayton, just a veteran that's been there for a while and really knows what's um, going on and has a, has was the number one target guy last year before neighbors came into the mix and uh, the shiny new toy was in the box. So I think he's one that you can definitely consider at three, nine here. And uh, I picked him up my season long league because I lost uh, the um, dubes from green Bay. He got suspended. So I needed somebody and there's really nobody left. So Slayton uh, got a lot of invested in him. Theo Johnson at tight ends. Okay. Here. I threw him in, I think, as like one of the sub uh, 3.5 um, options for you. On the Seattle side, Geno Smith, solid. I think he's going to be, uh, I think between he and, and, and Daniels are probably, and Purdy are going to be like the top uh, chalk uh, cash plays. Walker 3 is back, uh, but Charbonnet is still lingering there, so... But against this giant defense, I think Walker 3 is going to be the top one in the medium range. I think he's going to get back to where he needs to be. So I'm fading um, Sherman A, definitely. DK Metcalf is a, a strong play. Najigba also. Both of them can get you probably around 15 DK points. Metcalf definitely has the upside, makes some amazing catches. But, but they kind of force him the ball more in coverage. It seems like Smith and Najigba is easier to get open and lock it still. Lingering out there also. Right end, Noah Font is the starter. But keep an eye on A.J. Barner. If you need just a cheap punt, don't care about tight end or in your utility, just somebody at minimum price, they were trying to get him involved in this Monday night game. And he, again, if it's going to be a seven-point game or even a bigger blowout for Seattle, maybe they're... Um, some of the, the rest and some of the starters towards the end of the game in garbage time. Barner is a very good route runner target and someone that uh, if you just want a minimum price player that could potentially get a zero, 
But I think he had like 10 DK points last week and he caught a touchdown because they were like they were fixated on him in the one drive. So um, he's one to keep that um, name in mind. Green Bay and the Rams. So this was a 49 point total. My third favorite one on the board here. Three point favorite for Green Bay. Jordan Love solidly in play. Four touchdown passes, might throw four interceptions also, but I think the the good outweighs the bad, but just keep in mind that the bad could potentially still be there. Josh Jacobs uh, should be solidly in play also, especially if they the Rams can't do anything and Green Bay gets up and they're just trying to run out the clock. Wide receivers, Reed and Wicks are the head of the class there with Watson and Dubes out. So I, I like Reed the most. I, I've talked about him since game one, week one. The game plan for him. They run sweeps out of the backfield with him. And he's very talented. Wicks also is another one that can be a deep threat. Will Melton would be the one that if you're looking for the cheap third string wide receiver. But I think Tucker Craft is going to be the one that's going to benefit the most. Love Tucker Craft. Favorite tight end on the slate next to Kincaid. I'll have a lot of Craft if I'm not paying up for Kincaid at 3-5. Um, it looks like Musgrove is not going to play and, and love needs targets. So like there's a target share for Reed Wicks and Kraft should be quite amazing. Ram side of it. Um, don't really like Matthew Stafford here, but I do like Williams. I think that he could have a very solid day, 2025 20, DK points against this green Bay offense. And with, uh, green Bay has, at times, uh, if they're focusing on the run, because Williams is the only one, and they're, I don't know they don't have a stout run defense, but um, they're okay, then I think Whittington has really emerged as a wide receiver. I see him very popular on waiver wires. I see him um, in a lot of uh, daily fantasy like write-ups. So I'm not saying he's a core play, but I think behind Wicks in the sub-five category, he's right there. So in this one, I think you definitely – can uh, play Love and then play Reed or Wicks. And then Williams is where I'd run it back. But if you want to throw Whittington in the stack or in place of Williams to save you some more salary, that's fine too. And Kobe Parkinson, the tight end, is solidly in play too at 3.7. I like Kraft so much better. Kraft can get you like probably 15 point, 10 to 15. But I still think Parkinson can maybe get you, um, has a ceiling of like 10 at 3.7. So, uh, so great value tight end plays for you there and uh that rounds out everything so like i said here lamar and allen stroud were paying up for daniels love um pretty should probably be up a little bit higher but i think daniels and, and love just have the upside Purdy, i think would be very strong in cash watson geo smith and lawrence i'm not playing murray Minshew or anyone from the new england miami game unless i'm doing the gpp and pairing um the miami quarterback with hill Running backs, Mason, Williams, Henry, and then Cook is a uh, uh, tier below them. Walker 3, Jacobs, Hubbard, and NTN in the medium range. And Ford, Sermon, Tracy, the cheap guys there. Swift and um, Williams uh, for cheap guys. And not playing Miami guys, the New England guys, Moss or Charbonnet. And then wide receivers, Colin Chase, Metcalf, Harrison, Lake, Reed, Samuel, uh, Pittman, Deontay Johnson, and McLaren. There, the the five six here range is solid. Also with Higgins, Cooper, Sutton, uh, Wendell Robinson, and, and Downs, and then the sub K. Like it's nice to have some really really good options here. And Wicks, Whittington, Tucker, and Slayton. Tight end, I, I think you want to pay up for Kincaid, Bowers, McBride if he's there, Kittle if if he's there. Kincaid or Bowers would probably be the priorities. Um, Matt, Njoku, and Schultz are in play, but Lovecraft, Parkinson, and um, Hunter Henry in the cheap range. And then if you need to go below that, like Strange, Johnson, and, and Barner. So defense, Denver and Seattle are the favorite ones. If you want to pay up Chicago and Miami, great matchups. If you pay down to punt Carolina and New England, and then play Las Vegas and Baltimore. So all right, we're going tax. Let's go over the bill to get you on your way for your Sunday. So I'm taking Purdy and Mason there as my stack. Running back, 
so many different ways to go here. Like you said, you have the fill-in guys to go with, or if you want to go up and, and take another stud, that's fine. Reed and Pittman are where I'm going for the wide receivers, craft a tight end, and then the Denver defense. For GPP, give me Lamar, ETN. If you want to go tank Bisbee, I'm fine with that. Walker, three. Higgins to run back Lamar. And um, Kincaid, I'm paying a little bit of tight end there and going for the Seattle defense, pairing with Walker. And I'll let you decide if you want to run Lamar naked or if you want to throw um, header or wide receiver or take a chance on one of the tight ends there, I'd go likely. And then, again, like I said, if you're going for the millionaire, then take, like, Knicks, take Sutton, take Hill, um, build your core that way. So that's what I got for you. And um, hopefully, if everything works out, these videos will be back and be regular. So I'll try to get the Monday night one out. Um, after this, I'm going to take a little break and then go and uh, get the NASCAR one out for you. So that will be up on the channel pretty soon. So thanks for watching. appreciate it. If you have any questions, put them in the chat below. Hit me up at Megaworld31 on Twitter slash X. And if you want more information on FS IDFS, it's a great day to get in for only six dollars. Uh, if you go to the description video, it takes you to our pricing page. You can uh, play all the sports. So today we're going to have soccer. We're going to have uh, WNBA playoffs. If there's a game, I'm not sure, but we have MLB playoffs. We have NASCAR. Um, if uh try to think what else uh, nhl uh preseason hockey mckinley has been doing that season has um already started in, in europe and uh, i believe tuesday is the kickoff for that so mckinley's got coverage for that so lots of cool things very affordable pricing come check it out and if these videos help help us back like subscribe to our channel and share with your friends so thank you for watching hope you have an amazing weekend good luck in your contest and i'll see you next time